It is only through silent awareness that our physical and mental nature can change. This change is completely spontaneous. If we make an effort to change, we do no more than shift our attention from one level, from one thing to another. We remain in a vicious circle. This only transfers energy from one point to another. It still leaves us oscillating between suffering and pleasure, each leading inevitably back to the other. Only living stillness, stillness without someone trying to be still, is capable of undoing the conditioning our biological, emotional and psychological nature has undergone. There is no controller, no selector, no personality making choices. In choiceless living, the situation is given the freedom to unfold. You do not grasp one aspect over another, for there is nobody to grasp. When you understand something and live it without being stuck to the formulation, what you have understood dissolves in your openness. In this silence, change takes place of its own accord. The problem is resolved and duality ends. You were left in your glory when no one has understood and nothing has been understood. Liberation does not concern the person. 
For liberation is freedom from the person. Basically, the disciple and teacher are identical. Both are the timeless axis of all action and perception. The only difference is that one knows themselves for what they are, while the other does not. The personality is nothing other than a projection, a habit created by memory and nourished by desire. Ask yourself the question, who am I? And lucidly observe that the questioner, thinker, doer, sufferer are all forms that appear and disappear within the consciousness of I am the ever-living background. They have no reality in themselves. What we call the person is due to a mistake. Thoughts, feelings and actions appear and disappear indefinitely, creating an illusion of continuity. The idea of being a person, an ego, is nothing other than an image held together by memory. Creativity is an expression of the ultimate, but when there is a forgetting of oneself as the ultimate, there is insecurity and identification with the created.
The world of so-called objects is like the ego, only a projection. Thinking that you are this or that is only part of your imagination and hallucination. What you are fundamentally cannot be objectified. It is beyond time and space. To free yourself from mental confusion, simply be aware of it. Observe how you function without the slightest idea of changing anything. Vigilance purifies the mind and sooner or later will place you knowingly beyond it. You encounter ups and downs in your search for the self because you do not yet see things in their true perspective as a whole. This instability will continue just as long as you consider yourself as the body and mind. The mind will lead you astray until you perceive its true nature. This insight is the result of listening, free from the past.
Live with the sayings of the teachers and the reminders of truth these awaken. These unspoken reminders are the perfume of that to which they refer. Attune yourself to this stillness and not with what you are not. Why identify with the world? All existence is an expression of consciousness. What you are fundamentally is without cause, is completely autonomous. So that taking yourself for an individual doer who lives in a world of choice is an illusion of the ego. You must turn to this impersonal background as often as the opportunity beckons. Take note that your attention is constantly turned either towards objects or to ideas. A sense of being without qualification is completely unknown to you. Become the spectator. Become aware of the natural flow of life, your motives, actions and what results from them. Observe the walls you have built around yourself. As you become more aware of your body and mind, you will come to know yourself.
as this image of things as you believe them to be subsides, you will have a clear insight of what you are, something quite other than a product of the mind. You will gradually feel less and less involved in whatever comes up. And one day, you will discover yourself to be in the perceiving. Once you free yourself from the idea, I am my body, and the consequences of this idea, you will awaken to your natural state of being. Give yourself up entirely to this discovery. True awareness cannot be obtained by projecting known factors in terms of concepts and perceptions. What you are fundamentally cannot be experienced through reason and is only reached once you eliminate what you are not. A willful ego hinders you from being. The witness must enter upon the scene, enabling the ego to be recognized for what it is, an object. This witness is a pedagogical device that opens the door to being. The ego can
cannot know itself because it identifies with what it thinks, feels, experiences. For the ego, there is nothing but resistance, defense, agitation. It is the witness that shines forth and shows up the ego for what it is, an illusion. The contemplative witnessing state leads us to discover what we are not. We become aware of our body and thought patterns, the reasons that motivate our actions of which we were previously scarcely conscious. When we observe thought without interference or evaluation, without reference, the thought vanishes in the observing. as the emphasis is no longer on the thought process and content, but on the observing itself, this witness state becomes a purification. Without there being a person who purifies or lets go, A whole world of unsuspected energies releases itself. Mental activity ceases to be agitated and spontaneously follows its natural course. We discover ourselves in attention. We completely abandon the I am this, I am that reflex.
This attention transcends the experience and the experiencer. It is pure awareness.